type of content that's actually on the product that people buy? Yes, but not organized in the same way. Mm -hmm. What would you say is easier to read from an organization point of view? What's on the website or is what's actually on your can? Probably what's on, what's on the website. Okay. However, what's on the can is mandated by the FDA. Mm -hmm. We okay. have no choice about that, I including understand. such things as how many, what the font is of the line between the top mm -hmm. part and the bottom part. We have no discretion on um, how we do that, mm -hmm. the organization of that label. For a portion of the can, correct? We, in fact, have yeah. the, oh, certainly we have discretion as to how much the portion is. Right. You control how the I, rest of the content of the can, correct? Other than the nutrition facts, yes. Right. So it isn't as though everything on the can is up, up to the feds in terms of additional marking and advertising that you may put on the can. I've seen promotions during holidays. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff during... All of those things yeah. are, in fact, um, dis, um, options that the companies either can or cannot put on. Right. So you can put additional information you so choose. On the front of the can. We cannot put anything else on the back of the can. I understand that. That's the FDA's real The can's estate. round, though. It isn't just the front and back. It's kind of the way you display it, correct? But you won't see it. The Nutrition Facts panel and the Ingredients panel is yeah. untouchable territory. The FDA mandates what that can be. And thank goodness. So I, I agree. I'm just trying to figure out what you do with the rest of your particular product. How about the top of the can? If we were to uh, think broadly of uh, certain contents uh, of certain sugary drinks for over 140 calories, if the top, the, the top is an aluminum, you would just saw a commercial where someone Right, just a silvery color. What if every can had anything over 100 calories or 120 calories with marked with a red top, aluminum top? So people, would, people could actually know what is a high sugary drink and what isn't. I'm not sure that, um, that I think that that, that that would simply be giving consumers information, and I'm not that's, sure. That but that's, that's what you said we yes. wanted to do, right? I'm not, saying, want... I'm not saying that I would necessarily argue against that. Okay. The marketing well, people might see it a little differently. Why would they, why would they see it differently for providing consumers simply a signal that because something is... Because by is, having something a is, Excuse me, let me finish. If something is simply higher in calorie content, that let's say a standard of 100 calories, 120 calories, for all products, it wouldn't just be for your products, be for all products. What if would it was be wrong for all products, I, I think that would be fair. I mean, we're trying to present consumers with information trying to give them understandable information and many times signals to them that they could easily understand. So I'm just wondering why would be the first reaction from you, you wouldn't? I think if you're talking about having it on all products, that would be one thing. I think okay. singling out sugary beverages as if they are somehow unique in their contribution to the obesity question, that's what I do not think is uh, valid. Great. But I do think that if you were doing it for all foods, that's another story. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you both very much uh, for your testimony. We look you. forward to that follow-up information. Thank you. Um, our last panel uh, includes Linda Rudolph, uh, Genoveva Islas, and Marion Standish, who's substituting for Robert Ross from the California Endowment. Uh, please come forward. And again, my apologies. You heard me sort of call it out a few minutes ago. Uh, we're up against a time crunch here. So if collectively we can sort of keep your, this panel to a, about 10 minutes. I know there's a lot of facts and figures you want to share with us. Uh, and that will give us a little bit of time at the end for a uh, couple of questions and some closing statements. Okay. I'll, I'll try and um, shorten my testimony and hope I don't garble it in the middle, in, in, the, in the process. <laughs> I'm Dr. Linda Rudolph. I'm with the California Department of Public Health, where I'm the Deputy Director for the Center for Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion, and also currently serving as one of two acting Chief Deputy Directors for Policy and Programs. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. I want to touch very quickly on, on what are we seeing in California right now. Um, we know that about one of every nine California children is overweight or obese, one in three teens.